I have to start this video with a huge thank you. And the thank you goes to you guys. I only started 715 Tactical in early 2019. And I want to say I started out with around 12 subscribers. Now at the end of the year, we're over 10.3 thousand working with some of the biggest names in the firearm industry. And it's all because of you guys. That concealed carry video, over 3 million views. That's just insane. So this is me saying thank you to each and every one of you. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. Welcome back to another episode of the Thousand Round Proving Ground. 2019 is coming to an end, and we have had a heck of a year. So some things to look forward to in 2020. We're going to be starting a new build series called Build Your Dream. And the first firearm we're going to do is a Gen 3 G19 Glock. And you're definitely going to want to stay tuned for that, because there's going to be some very valuable stuff in that video for you. Not only the new build series, I also have some really, really... I mean, life-changing news coming in 2020. I'm not gonna spill the beans yet, because it's a little too soon, but stick around, and you guys are gonna be a part of it. Guys, this is gonna be the last video of 2019, and we're gonna end this one with another bang. Today, we're gonna go over the Springfield Armory Hellcat, the highest capacity micro-compact pistol out on the market right now. I was pretty excited to get my hands on this guy. I know there's been a lot of good things said about it, and there's also been some negative things said about it. So we're gonna check this out for ourselves, but first let's check out some footage. You already know the next part, here we go. back welcome back micro compact showdown so let's dive in a little bit closer we're going to do some comparison to the p365 and the springfield armory hellcat as with the majority of my videos if you see something that you like in here find the links right down in the video description you know me i like making life easier for you guys now this gun's going to come in two different configurations and this is kind of where it shines over the p365 now the hellcat does come in an osp version which is an optical sight pistol now on your OSP models, you're going to have a slide cut on top for either a JP Enterprise J-Point or a Shield RMSC optic. That's pretty huge in the carry world. I know a lot of people are converting over to those micro red dots. Personally, I'm a huge fan. On my Glock 19 that I carry, I'll run a Trijicon RMR or a Hollow Sun 507C. Now I will say it is a bit of a learning curve learning to shoot with a dot compared to your traditional sight system. You take the time to practice with it consistently and you start picking up that dot every single time. It's definitely worth it in my book. Now, both of these firearms are going to come with the same MSRP. That's going to be $599. Remember though, that's just an MSRP. I've seen these guns for as low as $500 bucks already. Now, this guy's going to be the highest capacity micro compact 9mm in the world. That right there speaks volumes. When I think about a carry gun, I think about the three C's. You're going to have comfortability, you're going to have concealability, and you're going to have capacity. That Hellcat has all of them. Now, it's going to come with two magazines. One's going to be a flush mount, and the other's going to be their extended version. Now, this flush mount is 11 rounds, so you're going to have 11 plus one, a comfortable grip, but wait, it's about to get even better. You're looking at a whopping 13 plus one with this guy, and let me tell you, when this magazine's on that firearm, the fit and the feel, the grip, that is perfect. That 13 plus one round capacity in a micro compact is just insane. That's huge in the carry world. I don't know if you guys realize how big that is. And this is only going to open the door for other companies to come out with similar capacity capabilities. I personally believe the more rounds you can have in a carry gun, the better. You don't know what kind of situations you're going to run into. Now compared to the SIG P365, which also has a 12 round magazine, that's pretty good for such a small pistol. But I do like the feel of the Hellcat way better with that extended magazine in there. It just makes it easier to shoot for me. I know everybody's different. Everybody's hand sizes are different. So me personally, this gun was a lot easier to shoot. 
Now, if this flush mount is still too big for your liking for concealed carry, it does come with a flush plate. I don't know where I put the thing right now, so unfortunately I can't show you, but it does eliminate all that, and it makes this magazine completely flush. I know these micro compacts are not made for accuracy. They're simply not. These firearms are made for one thing, and that's getting you out of a sticky situation. Now, I will say when I was shooting this Hellcat, about 95% of my shots were low and to the left. Now you can say that's the shooter's problem, I understand that because that's usually the case 99% of the time. But guys, I was shooting this along with the P365, along with a few other firearms, all in the same session, and this gun consistently hit low and left. I'm not exactly sure why that is, but I reached out to a lot of people before I filmed this video, and it seemed that they had the same problem as well. I would love to hear from you guys. If you have one of these or any experience with that, please let me know. Like I said, I would love to hear your input. Watch this footage. You're gonna see the grouping comparison from the Hellcat to the P365. And you're gonna see that the groupings on the P365 were significantly tighter than the Hellcat. Is that a deal breaker for me? Not necessarily. Granted, I would like to place every single shot right where I intend to, so would every other shooter, but it doesn't always work that way. There's a million different contributing factors that go into shot placement. And a lot of it comes down to trigger pull. Guys, this is a very concealable firearm, especially with the proper holster. Nobody's gonna know that you have this thing concealed on you. That's one of the main battles of concealed carry, is overcoming that printing. Now when companies drop new firearms on the market, it's usually a little hard finding a new holster for it. Unless you know some people. Now a good friend of mine, FS Tactical, which stands for Front Sight Tactical, is based out of Alabama, and he does all sorts of custom Kydex work. He's making awesome holsters, Kydex wallets, accessories, whatever you guys want. If he's got the means to make it, he'll do it for you. I'm telling you, this guy's customer service is unbelievable. He just wants to see you guys happy. When it comes to a good holster, you obviously want that retention. Hell, ask that FBI agent that was doing backflips out on the dance floor. We don't want to be that guy. You can do as many backflips as you want. That thing ain't coming out. Now he's got a lot of different prints to choose from. You can customize your holster to whatever your little heart desires. You're probably sick of hearing me talk about it. Just watch this clip. Now he was nice enough to make this holster for the Hellcat and send it out for this t &E, which I was super happy about. Because when you're reviewing a carry gun, you want to run it through some carry situations. You want to draw with it, you want to see how it's going to perform, and that's just going to give you a little more insight as to how that gun's going to run with a holster in a real life situation. You practice with what you carry. Practicing drawing from concealment is going to benefit you guys like you wouldn't believe. I'm going to have links down in the video description, straight to his shop, to his social media platforms, so you guys can check them out. Now this three inch barrel on here is gonna be a hammer forged barrel. It's a nice barrel. They put shots on target. Granted, they're not the tightest grouping, but it works. Now the slide serrations on the Hellcat are pretty pleasing. You can see them on the rear and they go all the way across the top, all the way to the other side. When it comes to front serrations, you're only gonna see them on the sides. And that's one thing that I would change about the Hellcat if it was up to me. Personally, I would have followed that same contour of going up and over to the slide right up in the front. It just makes press checks racking from the front way easier. I do have to mention, I didn't have a problem manipulating the slide with these front cuts. I'm a huge fan of doing press checks. I've always been that way, don't ask me why. And you can see on the P365, those serrations do not cover the top of that slide, neither in the front or the back. Yet they're fairly aggressive enough, you can get a good grip on them. Press checks from the front are no problem. I still didn't have any issues with that. That's just my personal preference. I think the more aggressive serrations and the more serrations on a firearm slide, the better. The slide on the Hellcat is gonna be a billet machine melanite finish. As you can see on the front of the Hellcat, it does have your standard rail. So you can customize your EDC with lights, lasers, anything that's gonna fit on the standard accessory rail. You're able to do it on here. One of my favorite parts about this Hellcat is gonna be this flat face trigger. If you're familiar with my channel or watch some of my prior videos, you guys should know that I'm a huge fan, if not the biggest fan of flat face triggers. Not only do I like the way they look, I love the way that they feel. And the Hellcat trigger is very pleasing. Here's the take up on it. There's a little bit of take up. 
Yeah, you probably want that in a carry gun with no external safety. You hit a very definitive wall, and then there's your brake. It's a very crisp brake. And the reset. That's a super short, super snappy reset. Guys, that's awesome on a carry gun. Big brownie points to Springfield for doing this trigger. Now, similar to a Glock, your safety is going to be integrated into the trigger. Now, there is no external safety on this gun besides the trigger. Now, the trigger group inside of this firearm is going to be nickel boron coated. Nickel boron is very popular for its self-lubricating properties. It's going to make this trigger pull very smooth. There's no hesitation in it. There's no crunching. There is a take up. You hit that definitive wall and boom, you got a very clean break. A lot of firearm manufacturers are going to use a nickel boron coating on their bolt carrier groups. I've seen them on AR triggers. It's a superior coating. Guys, this is a very, very pleasing trigger. Now compared to the trigger on the P365, you're going to see your standard curved face trigger on here. Probably about the same amount of take up. You hit your definitive wall and a very nice pleasing pull. Guys, the trigger on the P365 is awesome. But that's what sells it for me, is that flat face. Huge fan, Springfield, very nice choice with that trigger. Now the Hellcat does have a reversible magazine release, which is nice if you're a left-handed shooter. Let's talk about the grip texture on the Hellcat. Now this is supposed to be one of the latest and greatest things in the EDC world. Supposedly, this is a pressure activated grip texture. It has a pattern of staggered pyramid shapes. The taller pyramids have a flattened top to ensure comfort in the waistband and minimal wear on clothing while you're carrying. I can respect that. Now the shorter pyramids come to a point and they lock into your hand for a secure hold when the pistol is firmly gripped. Now they say this texture gets more rough with more pressure on it. I can't say that I noticed any difference. I shot this gun both with gloves and without gloves. I made sure my hands were a little sweaty. Me personally, it didn't seem like it got any rougher or more aggressive, but this is a very pleasing texture. Now the grip texture goes all the way around and it does have the slightest little finger groove there. You don't really notice it much. Granted, I'm not the biggest fan of finger grooves. I guess it all depends on the firearm, but you can see that little hump in there. So you're gonna have a little bit of a finger groove. It still feels really good in the hand. And the fact that Springfield put it on their indexing points, woo wee, more brownie points for you guys. Now you only usually see this on firearms that had custom framework and stippling done. A lot of manufacturers aren't gonna texture their indexing points. I'm not exactly sure why, but I wish all you guys would do that. As you can see, the P365 does not have that. So that looks like another win for the Hellcat. Now on the P365, you can see that same groove right on the frame. Honestly, I think the Hellcat feels better in my hand. Now, one thing I do have to say about this Hellcat, when I was shooting it, I noticed that your takedown lever right here. It kind of defeats the purpose of that indexing point because when I was shooting it, my thumb wasn't really hitting the indexing point. It was more riding on top of that lever. Now, is that a deal breaker? No way, because I'm gonna put it this way. When you have custom framework done to a firearm, a lot of times you can get a shooter ledge right there. And that's kind of how I'm looking at this. Now, my thumb didn't sit on the side of it. I let my thumb right on top of it. And I was actually able to push down a lot more on this frame. It just kind of gave me a little ledge to hold on to. Now, the P365, that takedown lever didn't seem to get in the way at all. My thumb was right up there, but there's not much for you to hold on to. In all reality, I kind of look at that as kind of like a little hidden bonus. I'm able to ride on top of that with my thumb. I'm able to get that solid grip just like I need to. Now let's talk about one more thing on these frames. These things have pretty high undercuts in the trigger guard and that's going to allow you to get a higher purchase on that firearm and you know as well as I do. The closer you can get to that bore access, the less felt recoil you're going to have in a firearm and with that extended beaver tail, boy you can get way high on that thing and you don't have to worry about pinching your hand in the slide either. Now on the back of the P365, that beaver tail is a little more beefy. And personally, I feel I can get a way better grip on this Hellcat. Now that's going to speak volumes to me at the end. Now, I've never been the biggest fan of that U-notch rear sight until I started shooting this Hellcat. It is pretty pleasing to my eye. On the front, you're going to see your yellow ring, which is also going to be tritium filled. That is a night sight. Huge win. Granted, this rear U-notch, there's no tritium in that guy. That's not going to light up at night. I think night sights on a carry gun should be essential. Here on the P365, you're going to see your standard square notch in the rear. 
and your front tritium sight. Now on this rear sight on the P365, those do have the tritium inserts. So not only is the rear gonna light up at night, so is your front. Just makes it a little bit easier to align your sights on your target. Now when it comes down to sights on these two rivals, I think the Hellcat's gonna exceed. Your front sight's gonna be a little bit brighter than the P365. I love that yellow ring. And like I said, that U-notch is starting to grow on me. I'm a fan. Now another thing about this rear sight, they're calling it a tactical rack rear which is gonna make it easier to rack off different objects if you're in that situation. If you have to rack it off your belt, a wall, an edge, that's gonna be pretty easy to do on that. Now these two firearms are gonna be fairly similar in size. Let's stack these things up so you can see it a little bit closer. It looks like the Hellcat is just gonna be a little bit longer on the bottom. And it looks like it might be a little bit slimmer than the P365. If you look at the barrel on both of these handguns side by side, you can see that the Hellcat barrel sticks out a little bit where the P365 is gonna be a true flush mount. If that's something that trips your trigger, make sure you keep that in mind. Now the fact that that Hellcat has 13 plus one, that's just mind blowing to me. At the end of the day, which micro compact am I gonna buy and which one am I gonna to recommend to you? It looks like the Springfield Hellcat is gonna be our winner. Quick rundown, hammer forged barrel, very aggressive grip texture, flat face trigger, 13 plus one round capacity. Yeah, Springfield, you win. Now both guns were very easy to shoot and the groupings might've been a little bit tighter on the P365. That's kind of a huge factor, I understand that, but this gun was still on target. Granted, I didn't have any issues with either firearms. There was no malfunctions, no failure to feeds, no failure to fires, none of that stuff. Everything ran flawless on both of these guns. But for my personal taste, the Hellcat has everything that I'm looking for in a carry gun. If you want to find out which one's going to be best for you, don't take my word for it. Because in the firearm world, everything is of personal preference. So get out there, go to your local gun store, try to hold one of these things, check them out. Hell, rent one at a range if you can. And that'll give you a lot more insight than this video. Guys, thank you for one heck of a year. As always, thank you for stopping in. Stay vigilant and I will see you next year. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States.